Greetings, I'm Santel Smith, the author of the Call Number series. As you can see, I finally got an opportunity to get a fresh, clean cut and a shave. It feels good not to look so hairy anymore. With the action picking up, we're into Chapter 6, starting with Tanya Brown's bullying situation. While taking the train to school, she barely misses a serious encounter with the girl looking for her due to the boy the bully has feelings for having eyes for Tanya. Situations like this were very common back then and still are these days. Gossip leads to rumors and someone hears something the wrong way, leading to fights, someone getting shot, and all other types of violence. Robin recovers from the fight and goes back to his classes, where he comes across the Asian girl from the train and learns that she attends Baruch College as well. But unfortunately, he once again misses a chance to talk to her. While doing this storyline with Robin, I nicknamed the elusive girl, White Rabbit, that Robin is chasing around like Alice in Wonderland. While we never find out who she is in book one, she plays a bigger role when Robin finally meets her in book two. This chapter we see more of Robin's life in college as he visits a fellow student in his circle of friends, who we saw briefly in the first chapter, Walter. Robin's one of those types who has friends who turn to him for advice or sympathy as he offers them a shoulder to cry on. He's good with consoling people due to his traumatic past, which is hinted here when Walter mentions Robin's ex-girlfriend, Deirdre. I've been dropping hints about Deirdre and their relationship all through the first two books, with a big reveal coming in book three. At the branch, Sonya learns that her plan to antagonize Robin resulted in Tommy calling out to recover from his injuries, then sees Robin walking in looking like a prize fighter. Luckily he stays out of sight when a pair of police officers stopping by, looking for him as a suspect. The officers didn't go too far, luckily for Tanya, who was confronted once again by her bully, Vicky Florence, who threatens Tanya with a box cutter after the branch was closed. I wrote the novel with a three-act structure, so with 18 chapters, this chapter would be the end of Act 1. Which is why it closes with Angie dealing with her college classes and Sonia informing Janelle's parents of her pregnancy. It's great showing college life through the eyes of Angie as well as Robin. Both going their separate paths, while Robin is more laid back in his studies, Angie is more determined as shown with her challenging her professor to be moved to a more advanced class. As Sonia talks to Janelle's parents, we're taking a look inside the Page's family dynamic and her stern parents. They didn't take the news very well, leading the Sonia to perform an amazing feat of strength. Some readers felt this was out of Sonia's character and unrealistic. But not to sound stereotypical, Sonia is a feisty character with an interesting background, which will be revealed in time. I had a couple of favorite scenes in this chapter, but I decided to read a quick excerpt involving Angie and her college professor. The Queens College of the City of New York was located in a remotely residential neighborhood of Flushing. Angie sat in an auditorium classroom among 40 other students in a stadium seating arrangement. Up front, the professor had been addressing the class for the last hour as he took a sip from his glass of water and resumed his lecture. Aristotle stated that a play must have six major elements. They were 
anyone? A murmur overcame the room as the students mused over the answer. Minutes ticked by as the professor waited. Angie rolled her eyes as everyone drew a blank. Plot, thought, character, she began. Diction, music, and spectacle. Ah, fantastic, Miss Trueblood. Very good. The professor phrased. Now then, your assignment until next class will be to compose a thesis on Aristotle's influence on the Greek playwrights of his time. As I always say, be thorough, and as always, be opinionated, the class replied in a monotone chorus. Yes, that will be all. The class dispersed, but Angie stayed in her seat. Ten minutes later, the professor was still erasing his notes from the chalkboard, and without even looking, he sensed his best student alone in the auditorium. And how may I help you this time, Miss Trueblood? Sir, I think you will agree that I have exceeded your expectations in this class so far. That would be an accurate observation, he replied. She stood up. Then I don't understand why you rejected my latest request to be skipped ahead to advance literary history. The professor finished erasing and sighed. I have no doubt in my mind you would do well in an advanced class, but you're forgetting one major detail, Miss Trueblood. This class is a required prerequisite for your curriculum. But you may know everything on my syllabus, young lady, but there is something else that's not on there that I'm teaching you. He turned to face her. And that is patience. Angie silently accepted her defeat as she picked up her books and sulked out of the classroom. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and follow me on the social medias. Keep watching for more videos. Peace is the mission.